I'm sitting watching blood while it dries on my sleep Thinking why does everyone I love die I just leave And if I mean a thing, then why would you leave? My mind only sees the suicide side of things At this point we can't relate if you ain't lost everything Okay, so what's up guys? Welcome back to West Wild World. If you could flip the camera around and see my girlfriend's face, um, you would understand why the energy is low for this video. But <laughs> yeah, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. She's over today, so she doesn't want to film for me. But today we're going to be feeding and I just need to clean two cages, so we're going to get into that. Um, you can probably guess which cage I'm going to have to be cleaning. It's Dumb and Dumber that are forever here. Um, and it's they're always over here, and they give themselves nose rub because of it. Because they always want to explore. They are super inquisitive animals. Hello, you hooding up. Look at you. They actually almost never hood. They actually have one of the more fantastic hoods, in my opinion, um, compared to many other cobras. Um, but you almost never get to see it. And that's the calm one. That's actually the male. I wonder what his got his penis in a knot today but we're just gonna wait for these guys to come out because they always do um, and yeah we'll talk a little bit about them you can see why they're called dumb and dumber they sort of like they literally antagonize each other and um, basically just inquisitive together as soon as one goes one way the other one wants to follow but you can see this one was the one that was hooding up you can see how calm and relaxed these guys are but they do just want to explore. But, yeah. So these guys are the second largest cobras in Southern Africa. And they're absolutely gorgeous. This is the banded variation of the snouted cobra. Um, they were split into three, three different species, but one of the species has subspecies. Um, but yeah, gorgeous animals. I'm just gonna get it right in the bin before the other one entirely disappears okay so i finally got this girl out she went from captivity to captivity she didn't even try and explore even a little bit as you can see that i can get away with a lot with these guys they do like to take little sneaky bites just like taste tests basically like sharks but yeah i'm gonna get that in there um none of my snakes are defanged or um venomoid so if i get bit i'll die so don't replicate anything I do. I don't think I have a secret whispering technique, but I have been doing this for quite a while and I haven't died yet. And as I always say with these guys, they are literally toddlers. They just want to go everywhere. But this is my big old girl, old Dickus. She's about a 10 year old snake. So I do have to be ready to be careful with her, but she also hunts for fingers. But she is at that size where it's just a little bit too difficult to handle her with a hook. But they're all exploring. So before I lose concentration with one of them and get put by the other, hey, hey. and then let me just clean up real quick and I'll get back to you guys. Alrighty, kids. Vitamin water. Have have it if you. <laughs> it's like SpongeBob, you know. Hey, hey, Captain. Okay. Um, vitamin water break though. <laughs> Good influence. My girlfriend doesn't agree with me telling kids to have vitamins. So I don't know. That's why she stopped. But what I was going to say is what I've just done here. I've added another layer of substrate down here because they seem to. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, they seem to like this Fainbos. It's Fainbos mouse. It actually gives a really nice smell throughout the snake room instead of that typical snake smell. And what a close-up oh my god and then i've also added it looks cock but this weather stripping here because i keep on pushing this was sealed over here and they pushed it open there's about four screws in there and they've actually literally pushed it open so i've just added a little bit of weather stripping there they can't get out but that's why they rub their nose raw um they are digging animals but i've also put uh, quite a deep layer of soil in there and they just want to dig out not in there so that's basically what I did. Let's get them out. Hey, okay. hey, old Dickus. You can shush. Hey, come out. But yeah, as I was saying at the beginning, I couldn't really speak about them for an extended period of time because 
they were just wanting to run away and I had to concentrate on so many things at once. But this is the second largest cobra in Southern Africa, just behind the East African forest <coughs> area, getting about 2.4 meters in length. These guys are only about 1.8, 1.7 meters, and they're only about three years old, so you can see how much bigger they can actually get. Um, they have a potent heat, I'm going to say hemo, neuro and cytotoxic venom, and they're absolutely gorgeous animals. But you go in there, don't come out, zoom, 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 so you can get your partners out. Or don't zoom, that's also good. That's fine. Let's close this a little bit. Yep, that's always good. Love it. But let's get the other two out. And let's hopefully not get hurt by old Dickus, because she is the nippy one. But this is the male banded Santa Cobra. Um, he's a little bit skinnier because he's been interested in mating. And I had to medicate him for the beginning of an RI. It was a little bit of signs showing that he might start to get an RI, so I just medicated him with antibiotics. So he stopped eating for that, and he was also trying to mate with both the females. Um, what's cool in the wild, um, the Snarter Cobra is the band variation. Um, the banded variation, most of them are actually males in the wild, which is quite weird, but most of the ones that are found yeah, in the wild are males. Um, they aren't a morph, they aren't anything, that's just a different locality of them. Um, not a different subspecies or anything like that. But I don't want them to run away. So let's just get them in here. Hopefully they enjoy the new smiles real quick and don't come out. And then let's get old Dickus out. Maybe we can look at her a bit more. And there you can see why I call her old Dickus. Look at the absolute girth on this girl. She's absolutely huge. I love her. If you guys can see the purple stuff on her, it's um, actually just an antibiotic cream um, because the previous owner that had her actually didn't treat her very well. She had a lot of stuck shed when I first got her. She had about three layers of stuck eye caps. So you can imagine how bad the shed was and that's still what I'm treating from her. And that's these purple spots over here. It's just a little antibiotic cream just to help her heal up. But she's also going into shed. So, it should clear up pretty soon, but let's get it in there. Gorgeous animal. And you can see the size difference of her. But we can move on and yeah, hopefully these idiots get back in their enclosure without too much hassle. Go. Again, never do what I do. Um, I've been doing this for an extremely long time but i've grown these guys up from little wee babies obviously not old dickers but yeah and i take risks into my own hands me handling this way is not going to affect anyone besides myself um and yeah oh my gosh okay guess no hooks for you stay in there hello stay no but yeah, I just need to go onto the Cape Cobra and then we can start feeding. Fuck this. My girlfriend doesn't like the comedy. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, it's always a pain to fucking take them out. Not because they're defensive or anything like that, but just because they don't cooperate. Um, and they, I always say it, but they are like two year olds. They just want to see everything smell everything and do everything but this is the rescue cape cobra that unfortunately got hit by someone but you can see how much spunk he has now i just need to clean up his enclosure um he just bit himself there he loves biting everything um and i'll explain to you why in a second hey you are becoming on fire a little firecracker so if you guys can see we call him old half hood because someone he was a rescue cape cobra that was deemed not fit to be released back into the wild um him biting himself isn't going to do anything they're immune to their own venom um but yeah so someone tried to kill this guy and unfortunately hey calm down now um unfortunately well fortunately they didn't succeed but he left a big gash in him and obviously during that time the guy before me sutured it up there's also another mark a little bit further down um, on him that's 
well, shown that he's been hit by something. So during that time, he wasn't eating, obviously, because it's a huge gash right by his head. And obviously, the suture process and everything like that is very, very painful for him. But yeah, there's the other mark down here, just a little bit lower down on his body. And he is biting like this, obviously, because he doesn't trust humans at all. He's probably his only human interaction was getting hit on the back of the head, trying to be killed. And then, um, obviously, the suture process after that. So yeah. But I just need to clean up his enclosure and then I'll move on to some other snakes. So I've just cleaned up the Cape Cobra's enclosure, gave him new water. I've also left a chick and an adult mouse in there for him. Because he's obviously way too scared about human interaction and I mean rightfully so. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get him out, put him back in and go feed. I'm vaping like a cool kid. Kids, listen to me, um, take your vitamins and don't vape. Alright, isn't that good advice? Or should I tell them all to free handle a Cape Cobra like this one? I mean, I guess it would be natural selection at its finest, but look at old Harford doing so good. Um, again, I need to do quite a bit of handling with him just for him to get a good um, sort of association with people. But I also want him to eat, so I don't want him to stress him out too much. I guess these little handling sessions do sort of get him acquainted and um, desensitized to human contact. Um, but obviously you're not going to just forget um, a time someone tried to kill you just like that. But hopefully we can get his trust when he gets back up to full weight. I mean he's already doing a lot a lot better. His spine's still showing but I think he was off food for about three months before he came to me. Um, and that's of no fault of the guy that I got him from. The guy was did an excellent job with him, but he just didn't want to take any food. But I'll leave him alone and let him get back to doing his things. Alrighty doozy. I love my golden reactions to stupid shit. But I'm going to be feeding these two. I wasn't going to feed them today, but they look super interested in food. As soon as I came in here, they both are in their hunting positions. Um, they'll sit like this in their ambush positions wait for something to come across and you'll see why they ambush hunters when I offer this girl a chick. Look at how fast that is. Can't even see it. And then you'll see why this other Limpopo one won't do well in the wild because she won't strike at it. <laughs> but if you just give it in her face, she will start to take it down. Eventually. Like now. Or not. Hey, there we go. I guess she is a little bit of an ambush hunter. So these guys will sit and wait up like up to a month, just sitting still like this along animal paths and unfortunately sometimes hiking trails and waiting for something to come past and they hit them with that lightning fast strike. They're beautiful animals. Absolutely gorgeous. I love my two females. Um, not the one behind the camera though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm joking, I love you. Um, and then we're just going to move on to some other snacks. Alrighty, my girlfriend doesn't tell me when she's filming, but check it how big my neotropical rattlesnake is. Check it his little tail, he's got four beads on him now, he's had three sheds with me. A little tiny little rattle over there. What's cool about their rattle is that they get an extra little nub or bud, I actually don't know what it's called. Um, each time that they shed. Some people say that's a good way of telling how old the snake is, but they break off, so it's not a good way. Um, um, it's made out of the same stuff as the stuff in our fingernails, so yeah, very, very brittle. Just a easy little quick tag. Good little snake. What's cool about this, hello, yes, yes, your food's there, hello. He's just picking up my heat signature. They are pit vipers. Um, those big holes at the front of his mouth is actually heat sensing pits. They are very, very sensitive and it helps him hunt at night. But what's cool about these guys is that they have a mainly neurotoxic venom um, compared to most rattlesnakes that have a hemotoxic venom. So a bite from this guy is especially bad. Obviously any dangerously venomous snake's bite is exceptionally bad, but this guy would be a bit worse than the normal rattlesnake species. But I'm just going to let him eat up and not concentrate on our hands. <laughs> Camera woman is getting a bit close there. But I'm going to close up and so you can just eat a little meal up. But cool, then we'll move on. Okay, so next up is my Bittus rhinosaurus. I do not know where he is. 
beautiful. Oh, he's actually over here if you want to come. This little head is just poking out over there. So let's see if he'll strike out for his meal. Yeah, he looks interested. So these guys are similar to the puff adders. They are ambush hunters. So they have a lightning fast strike. They also are known for the world's longest fangs and the world's largest venom yield. He's a bit weird with food. <laughs> And you can see how fast that strike was. That was put in like a million times slow mo. Um, but yeah, he's just a little, he's a little neonate. Um, so he's still a bit weird with food, but he's powering down, he's drinking, he's doing everything that he should be doing. So I'm just gonna leave him alone and move on to some other snakes. Okay, I didn't know we were filming. So next up is gonna be my boomy slangy. Um, I don't actually know. I was going to try and say how the Americans say it. Warm flong. Oh, fuck. But we're going to offer him some geckos and some pinks. See if he's interested. Hey, look. Some food. Look. Some food. So this guy, whoopsie, during summer. Sorry, he was crawling up to my finger while I was concentrating on the gecko. Um, during winter, he's actually gone off pinks because he didn't want to eat anything besides geckos. I actually had him on this size pinks and he was going after them. So I have to slowly work back up to him getting, well, recognizing the mice as food. Um, as you can see, he is still very skittish and I have no idea where his head went. Whoop. Hello. These guys are the most venomous snakes on the African continent, drop for drop, more potent than that of a black mamba. And you can see how he goes for the, the geckos. He used to go like that for the mice pings. But he, um, from our cold weather and the load shedding, he went off food and he would only take live geckos. So that's why he's eating this. But I showed you guys in one of the previous videos about train feeding. And that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I basically have to start from the beginning again. Um, of how I started to get him on pinks. So my method is, is I don't, I'm not saying this so anyone can follow it, but my method was the geckos frozen thawed first and then train feeding onto the mice so you can get the texture of it. Um, and then I slowly moved to actually cutting open the gecko, which is quite gruesome and putting a very small pink in. So he had sort of both of them. Similar to train feeding how I am now, um, but it was just in the gecko so you could see that the mice pink was also food. Um, and then I moved on to scented pinks and then kept them on that for a little while. And scented pinks is basically just rub the, the gecko guts on this little pink so you can get the smell of the gecko. And then yeah, then I moved on just to soul pinks. But load shedding and winter mess that all up, so I have to start it again. It's a very tedious and time consuming process. You have to have a lot of patience to actually do this. Um, you can't get upset with the snake. Obviously you are varying them from their normal diet. Um, I don't necessarily want him to be on solely pinks, but at this size I can't get day old chicks in him, I can't get quail eggs, I can't get anything in him. So pinks is the most accessible and geckos isn't a feasible thing either because they are quite small and he's getting quite large but child what you also need to worry about is that because that this isn't their natural diet um, they can become obese very quickly so you really have to watch how much you're feeding them when you're feeding them and things like that um, but yeah so just can't let him finish up because then he won't take the pink so again this is what is called train feeding it actually does help with very stubborn snakes especially little arboreal vipers um, that people love to keep but when they're small they're absolutely a pain to get onto pinks or on any food in general um, so once you get that one first one down um, with assist feeding, then you can train feed them like this. So next up, I'm going to be feeding this absolutely gorgeous copperhead, and this is going to be the last snake of today. Let's see if she wants a chick. Oh, well, okay, take it like that, and then I'll just leave another one in there for her because she's quite a big girl. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. If you guys did enjoy, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and as always, I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.